Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 12 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and joining me, sitting next to me for, I think, the first time uh, in a while, yeah. is, uh, is Pervez Ahmed. Yeah, that's right. We haven't done one of these in, in quite some time. So the, uh, the trouble with modern life and scheduling, and even though we live, what, not even two, you know, maybe... Five miles apart. We we live close enough that right. it shouldn't be as difficult That's as right. it is That's to, right. to schedule That's time. Right. But juggling work, families, etc., and usually the availability the availability of our guests, we uh, we're, we're forced to do it at wee hours at night or some random time where we can't be together. So well, what what happened is that this this is a, this is our one year yes. celebration, yes. a celebration involving just us actually. Yeah, it's like the opposite of a celebration. <laughs> But we were like, you know, this was, I think this, I think they say, I think the first year anniversary is a paper anniversary. Okay. That's the gift. I didn't get you anything, but I, well, well this is digital. So, yeah, so let's just say go. this is a Bitcoin anniversary. There you go. <laughs> new, new category. There you go. But we were like, yeah. oh, you know, we have trouble scheduling mm-hmm. guests. Let's just talk to each other and that'll be easier. And then ironically, I think it's taken like twice as long to schedule time for just the two of us to talk. It has, it has. This is like a third attempt. Um, and, uh, and, and, and additionally, I think, uh, we, we have received some feedback from folks writing in or from conversations we've had in person with folks who listen to the show and, uh, people have expressed some sort of an interest in hearing our stories. People want to know our secret origin. And I almost, I almost feel like, uh, like we're giving something away a little bit, you know, because, you because the way I look at it, it's like in comic books, right? Uh-huh. You, had, you had Wolverine, he had a mysterious origin. Nobody knew his origin. People were like, what's his deal? It's a story, and then and then they made that movie with his origin. Now nobody cares about Wolverine anymore. So I worry that we're kind of we're we're we're, sh- we're sh- 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 shying away the mystique a little bit. I don't know about nobody caring about Wolverine anymore, but yeah, but I, I yeah I, I do agree with you. There is some there it's is a some, terrible movie is what I'm saying. <laughs> right, but there is some charm in the mystique. Yeah, certainly. Uh, but yeah, so no, it's it's been a year, and uh, uh, we've. Uh, Enjoyed the run, and uh, we hope that you have. And this as well. is not the end of the run, right? Really. Right? Right? No, by no means. Uh, this is uh, but one chapter. So, um, but it's been good. It's it's. I think we've we've we've. we've uh, uh, I don't know if you want to kind of get into like maybe talk start talking about why we did the show or what happened. Yeah, you, you know. Well, yeah. well, let's let's yeah. share the secret origin of diffused congruence. Now, right. now, how did this? podcast endeavor come about how did it come about i i'm pretty sure it started with you well so i well i mean i i can't take credit for that but i mean because even if you were to pass the buck to me i would say that listening to your other podcast for quite some time uh zucky, the movie film podcast by go. the way look that's up right. on itunes that's right zucky's got another podcast that i listen to uh regularly and so the idea uh, of of, uh, of of doing something similar uh was certainly I think that was where it germinated, just seeing the success that you were having and the conversations that you were able to you were able to have um, with you and your co-hosts uh, on that on that podcast. So uh, just seeing that, and then uh, like sort of scouring the internet and looking for similar or looking for podcasts that you know that came from within American Muslim circles. And either seeing very few, or the you know, like the paucity of, or the lack thereof, completely. We we detected a little bit of a void. Yeah, right? and and I think that points to something about sort of the Web 2.0 age that we live in, where mm. you know, traditional media, in, in whether in in terms of of uh, either television or or traditional journalistic outlets, you know, they've always been kind of a funnel or a filter where where it's uh, they're gatekeepers, right, keeping out. Uh, voices of I don't want to say necessarily minority communities, mm. but certainly keeping out voices of uh, the larger community. Right, and and that's what Web 2.0, the age of interactivity, allows is is for us to be able to say, well, we feel like this community's voice is being underserved. Mm-hmm. Let's do something about it. Yeah, and you know, for for us, that means hanging out in an afternoon, drinking some coffee. And chatting and being able to share our conversation or conversations, I should say, right. uh, with with you, the listeners, and and that's something that we've uh, striven to do. Mm-hmm. And I think the lineup of guests that we've had over the past year uh, illustrates uh, just how much variety there is. That's right. You know, uh, w- within the community. And, and you allude to a point which also has to do with sort of why we did it or or, or where the idea came from, which was um, you know just obviously. Uh, the uh, the desire to showcase and highlight 
the fact that the American Muslim community and certainly the Muslim community the world over, but 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 focusing specifically uh, within the American milieu, that that the Muslim community here in America was not a monolith. Uh, it was not a uniform community by any means, and that there were diverse viewpoints, diverse points of view, diverse experiences. Um, and so the idea was to, again, highlight those and to showcase some of that diversity uh, and hence the sort of nature of the diffused mm-hmm. uh, part of the diffused congruence. Yet there is, yet at the same time, there being some sort of congruity or congruence with, you know, uh, among the various voices, sort of going back to what the what the name uh, of the show sort of where it comes yeah, which, from which i think is the number one question we get like <laughs> so what does yeah. that mean after the initials is sort of like fascination like wow that just sounds interesting uh but yeah it, it actually means something it's not just sort of putting words together <laughs> um but but so so that was certainly par- also part of the i think the calculus right to to just to, to, to sort of highlight that and i think if we go if we just you know look at the roster of, of folks that we have had on in the past year um, I, I, I hope at least that we've we've been able to do that to some extent. Well, I mean, I th- I think that when when you're able to to spend yeah. more than an hour talking with somebody like Osama Khan mm-hmm. and more, more than an hour talking with somebody like uh, Farhan Tahir, who who both are very uh, I was going to say out and proud, but that's not <laughs> it's the wrong yeah. metaphor. Um, very open with their Muslimness, mm-hmm. and yet they embody it. In, in very distinct ways in terms of, of how they apply their, their, uh, their craft, if right, you will. Right, right. And that's, the, you know, that's beautiful. Right. And, and you know, I agree. It, I agree. It, it's interesting, right? Because, because the conversation... I, I, was, I was having this discussion with somebody yesterday where I was just like, the conversation that's being had in the media about Islam and about Muslims seems to be it's it's occurring uh you know despite muslims it's it's yeah. occurring uh right. almost almost willfully without muslims being a part of the conversation and so we you know we're we're, we're like the third person we're like the awkward presence right. in the room that that we're being talked of and not at that's right and we're, we're subjects as opposed to yeah. yeah i mean yeah 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 you know we're not agents of our own yeah right and and, and it's interesting because there's and maybe maybe you can you can chime in on this because th- my perception is that the the conversation about Islam I think by virtue of things like uh, you know what, what's happening with with ISIL mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff it it's turned the conversation in a direction that's that's extraordinarily uh, negative mm-hmm. and and it's negative to a degree that I have never yeah felt. Even in the the days following nine eleven, yeah, and and I mean, wh- why do you think that is? Why well, is that? I mean, you know? I, I think one could certainly point to the fact that there is more than just a cottage industry. There is a consorted effort, a, a consorted effort, uh, a very well financed, well greased effort, right? Well machined, right? Or well greased machine out there. Uh, is that the right? Well, that works. Oiled, right, well, whatever. Well, 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 well oiled, yeah. Uh, I was trying to avoid saying oiled because of its. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But um, yeah, so uh, out there that is actively seeking to undermine or to devalue, uh, you know, Muslims. Well, I mean, when you think about it, in that sense, for these people, the the actions of ISIS are absolutely dovetail perfectly with their long-term goals yeah right i mean i, right. I read a piece and, and we're not even getting into some big vast conspiracy out no, there I right, mean, right i mean just, just you know the, just by virtue of the fact that well, you're right well i mean, well, I, mean yeah. I mean i don't need to get into a conspiracy yeah. to say that david horowitz who is one of the prime uh, movers and shakers in the islamophobia industry wrote an article on his uh, uh, i believe on his website called thank you isis <laughs> wow and uh, you know Not any more ironic than that yeah right? and and it, well that's exactly it right? yeah. because because he's had this is this is somebody i mean if you don't know who david horowitz yeah. is uh, one thing i always say about david horowitz is that mus- more muslims know who david horowitz is yeah. than not muslims so he's so true. he's he's in, in in big picture terms he's he's an insect and mm-hmm. it's it's worth underscoring that point but he's had a virulence and a vehemence against islam mm-hmm. which is borderline psychotic and this kind of thing 
uh, you know, stuff that's going on, these uh, beheading videos that are just uh, horrifying, mm-hmm. it just feeds into the narrative that people like him want to propagate. That's right. And they traffic in. Um, you know, and what's interesting about the Horowitzes of the world or, you know, I mean, we're recording this show, uh, what, a week, not even a week after the, uh, the you know, the uh, Bill Maher episode where Ben Affleck uh, took on Sam Harris and, and Bill Maher uh, in terms of defending Islam and Muslims. Um, but but what, what, what I feel like as sort of a common thread uh, among the quote unquote Islamophobes uh, like Horowitz and uh, and Sam Harris and Bill Maher and others is that they sort of couch their criticism of Islam uh, within uh, or, or you know, from a sort of oh we're we're atheists and so we we don't like all religions or yeah. in the case of Horowitz it, you know it, it gives them more legitimacy that's right or I, they, I, they try to pawn it off yeah as I'm a former religion. leftist and I used to you know and now I've seen the light you know yeah. and so yeah exactly to what you're saying in terms of oh look I mean we don't we're not here just to we don't just have an axe to grind against Islam yeah. you know we don't like any religion but as you said I think elsewhere but there's a very sort of special venom uh, an, an extra speak, yeah an extra extra yeah. uh, as they say in Urdu extra mirchi masala for, that's right for well and, and against Islam against Islam right. and and it's it's it it's distur- it's disturbing to me to the extent that uh, so many of the assumptions that are being put forth by these people are sort of taken uh, at face value mm-hmm. uh, and and that's worrisome because the underlying so the core of their argument essentially boils down to and maybe you know correct me if I'm wrong it's essentially love the Muslim hate the Islam right 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 and. That's problematic on all kinds of levels because because what it's essentially doing is uh, certainly Sam Harris is guilty of this and I've I've uh, I've been aware of him for for yeah. a while and I you know again he's not somebody I, sp- I spend a lot of time paying attention to but his <laughs> the crux of his position all along has been that either you like I- Islam is about extremism and da 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 and if right. you're somebody who doesn't Believe in that. Well, you're just doing Islam wrong. Wrong, right. And right. my response to that is always, who are you? Yeah. Who are you to tell... Which practicing? I think Affleck sort of leads, right, in the show with that. Like, you know, when, when he's... Was, you know, and, and some some have accused him of being snide or whatever. But he's like, you know, oh, and thank you for being on the show, right? Because you uh, are the are the voice for Muslims, right? right. You know, I mean, he sort of leads with that when, when, when he responds to Harris, which... Yeah, exactly. Um, and then... Yeah, I'm sorry... Like go ahead well, and finish I mean, your point, I mean, to, I, but I agree with you. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things where it's you know um, the the assumptions that that somebody like Bill Maher, mm-hmm. who has been you know this is nothing new for Bill Maher. He's he's been on the record against Islam and by extension against Muslims. Like mm-hmm. let's 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 keep that thread connected because it's important. Because you don't get to say I love you, but I hate everything that you believe. Right. It doesn't work that way. Right, right. Uh, but, but, you know, somebody like Bill Maher, the fact that he's saying these things, and if you pay attention, the audience is applauding and loving it. Why? Yeah. Because because when you think about it, Bill Maher, to some extent, is the voice of the left, mm-hmm. right? So in other oh, yeah. words, people sort of, uh, everything he says is given this veneer of, of respectability. But it's problematic when you have people like Bill Maher and people like Bill O'Reilly who are, who are reading from the same hymnal, you know? That's right. Absolutely, that's, that's problematic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you you bring up Ben Affleck, and I th- I think that's an interesting point mm-hmm. that's worth raising, right? And and it is it is the fact that at the end of the day, Ben Affleck, who's a, a smart guy, he, that's he, right. I, I've had a lot of respect for his right. uh, uh, views, if not all of his film choices necessarily <laughs> over the years. But one of Ben Affleck's closest friends yeah. is a friend of our show. Rehan Jalali. That's right. You know? That's right. And and it's worth recognizing the role that we as as individuals play on the micro level. That's right. We That's can't right. spend a lot of time stressing about the macro. Oh my gosh, the the media this and the the you know oh the so and so and all of their people are saying this. You know what? On some level, you look at that and it's just overwhelming. But you know what? What we can do is be who we need to be to individuals. That's right. That's right. Just live your life. Be the person you need to be because that's what matters. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, and I think that's a very important 
uh, point, especially that I have when I have conversations around not only this issue, but you know, similar issues with Muslims in that, look, I mean, getting frustrated about events or, uh, or, or individuals or what's happening in other parts of the world that are, that are in most cases clearly out of your control is just going to be, you know, an exercise either in fertility or frustration or depression. But being able to actually engage or being able to affect change in your own communities or to those that you interact with on a daily level or on a, da on a daily basis, whether it's your client or your patient or your you know, fellow faculty member uh, or what have you, colleague, uh, that, that that's, you know, it's, it's, it's th are those individuals that are within your sphere of influence and, and that's the change that you can that, that that you can have. And so, rather than sort of spending hours, you know, sort of lamenting on like lamenting about events that are happening in another part of the world that you may or may not be able to actually bring about any change or affect any real any real change, you know, what are we doing on, on the micro level here in our own communities or in, you know, with, with the people that we can interact with or that we do interact with? So, I, th I think that I think that's a great point. Um, and it also, you know, like when we're talking about the subject of like, you know, love the Muslims but hate the Islam, you know, I mean, outside of a theological or philosophical argument, um, you know, Islam is only reified through the actions and behavior of Muslims. Explain that. Well, Islam is not a, how do I say this? Like, is, is, is Islam isn't just out there, you know, as an abstract, right? I mean, it, it's, it becomes real and, 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 or it becomes real when, 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 when Muslims, uh, you know, how they choose to, whether it's interpret it or engage it or practice it. And that's Islam in the real sense. Like I said, I mean, there's, there are theological issues and philosophical issues here that we don't really need to get into about you know Islam being an object reality. But 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 in the in the end of the day, like in, in a real sense, I mean, Islam is what Muslims make it, and 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 how Muslims engage it. And so I think that is a lesson not only for the Sam Harris's and the in the Bill Mars of the world, but also for Muslims, right? Because in this in this same conversation about ISIS or Islam, you know about you know, extremism or terrorism in Islam's name, an often refrain that you will hear from Muslims is, well, they don't, they're not Muslim. Right. That ISIS isn't Muslim. Okay. And I would argue that they are Muslim simply by virtue of the fact that they claim to be Muslim. They identify. They as identify as Muslims and they, in the actions they, they, that they do as misguided as they may be, they do it in the name of Islam. And I don't want to sound like, again, he, you know, here I may be sounding like Bill O'Reilly or something, but I think, I, mean, I think there's a real philosophical sort well, of... Well, but, but I mean, what you're, what you're alluding to yeah. is, is the fact that there, there, are, there is a, a variance of interpretations that allow for people to, cl uh, to claim themselves to be a thing without representing... All the all the strains of belief in that thing. That's right. That's right. And and so while it's reasonable to say that ISIS or the their ilk uh, are incorrect mm -hmm. in their interpretation of Islam, or that they go against you know centuries of interpretation and tradition that is found within the sources within the intellectual heritage of Islam, is is one thing. But to say that. Well, Al Qaeda or ISIS or any of these, you know, again, any of these groups are not Muslim. Or the guy who beheaded, you know, the, you know, like that, you know, what happened in Oklahoma. You know, if these people claim to be Muslim, then, you know, they are Muslim. You know. Okay, so so where does no. that leave those of us who? Are opposed to what they're doing. What what does that? What onus does that put on us? Right, because because Greta Van Susteren right. yesterday on Fox News is talking about you know uh, any Muslim that wants to condemn this, I'll have them on. It's like, well, what about That's all right. these Muslims that condemn? Oh, hey, yeah. We need more. I don't know what I don't know what the yeah. Blood. I don't because at the same yeah. time she you cites have to rub your stomach, pet your head while That's, you're standing on a toe. You know? Which is and I think and, and I think also an interesting conversation. Um, to, to to have, but I'll, I'll let you ask your question or finish your point because well, I, I, well, I, I don't. Is, I want to. This is the thing, right? Because, because the question that is out there 
consistently, and granted, uh, most of this emanates from sort of the, the far right corners of, of the media sphere. Where are the Muslims? Where yeah. are the so called moderate? Here, I'm going to do my Rush Limbaugh. You people, where are the so called moderate Muslims? Muslims. You don't sound douchey enough. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, or, 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 oxy, there's only so much content. bile. Yeah. I, there's only I, so much bile that you can. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, true. It's, yeah. it's, uh, I need, I still need to be able to look myself in the, in the mirror. Before I <laughs> That's right. Um, but, but that idea, right? Where yeah. are the so called moderate Muslims? Right. Now, now, my traditional response, and, and I've never been asked, like, why aren't you condemning this? Yeah. Because people know me better than that. That's right. But I mean, were I to be asked, I'd be like, look, uh, you know, you talked about your sphere of influence. Yeah. Look, I can't be. What does any? What is something happening across the world exactly. as barbaric and horrible as it is have to do with me? Right. It has nothing to do. With Hashtag me. Muslim apologies. Right? Isn't that the? Yeah, yeah that was yeah, a, that yeah. was a thing. Right? Think that exactly. was trending. Yeah. Why aren't Muslims apologizing? Right. It's right. and and it it strikes me because that's a that's an it's it's an extraordinary double standard. It and, is. And it's it's not a standard that the black community is put to. It's right. not a standard that any other minority group that's subject to stereotyping to the same degree is is. Subjected to. Or majority is subject right. to, right? I mean, s- some white male, uh, you know, uh, shoots up, a, a, you know, a school or or a movie theater. You know, we're not asking the entire white community to denounce it. Right? Well, well, I think because because there is no white community, <laughs> okay. right? right? Right, right. Because yeah. because because or, it's or, not monolithic, right? That's, that's right. Like, and people know that, and people right. know that, and they, they they know that how foolish that type of a. Uh, of, of, of a cry or you know or, or, of, or a request would be right to have the so-called you know white community and denounce it or to ask uh, fellow Christians to denounce the actions of you know Christian extremists or Hindus or Buddhists or whatever I mean it's, the case. It, it is a it very borders, special place that Muslims have you it know? borders on comical or, yeah you know there was uh, there used to be this TV show called Murphy Brown you ever, you ever watched that show Murphy no, Brown yeah. well I didn't I never watched you know, it okay, I remember right? it of course Murphy Brown was one shows that lasted it, a long time and now it was part of the zeitgeist it. remember for, for like a minute and a half Dan Quayle and Dan Quayle yeah, yeah, right. yeah that was part of the zeitgeist so the, there was this one episode uh-huh. where, where Murphy Brown's house gets robbed and so she sets up like a neighborhood watch meeting right and so you have this this kind of crust, crusty older white guy who who tells his black neighbor like can't you talk to those those kids as if like he knows them right and then he's like well what am I supposed to do yeah. you know and then as the conversation continues at some point uh, somebody brings up like well you know things haven't been the same since Clarence Thomas got on the Supreme Court and and this guy's like can't you talk to him. <laughs> Right, and he's like, I don't know him. You that's know? right. That's right. And it's kind of the it's same. It's as thing. absurd. It's, it is. It's, absurd. I mean, that's absurd. At re- reducto ad absurdum. Right. right. You know, exactly. Just, that's what exactly. this is. Right. It's 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 one of those things where, and again, just to be clear, I've never been put in this position, right. and, and I'm grateful for that because I would, I don't know how I would react. I would think right. I'd be. Angry and I think if, that I was going to say, like, I mean, you know, there, there's always, and I understand the need to do it when 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 major Muslim organizations in America have issued statements. But I, I got to be honest. I mean, a part of me, a part of me, it always bothers me when I read a statement from a, a bona fide, you know, quintessentially American Muslim organization issuing a statement about Hamas or ISIS or Al Qaeda, you know, in so Iraq. Something that's specifically tied to the geopolitics of that region. That's right. There's no connection here. That's right. Because it's like, you know, to me, it just feeds into that same. That that, that 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 same you know again the, the, like the Greta Van Susterens of the world right like what, where are the Muslims denouncing it as if again Muslims the world over uh, or or Muslims in America have to somehow denounce what their co-religionists are doing in another part of the world a part of the world where they have you know where we or or the American Muslim community exercises little to no influence whatsoever mm. right right. Uh, and, and that's not to say, again, you know, uh, that, that, that practically every, you know, to, to respond, if you will, to, 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 to Greta Van Susteren's demands. And yeah, listen up, Greta. Yeah, yeah. And she's only We're echoing, you. like you said, the Rush Limbaugh's, the Sean Hannity's. And uh, bear in mind, Greta yeah. Van Susteren is one of the least Or even the Bill Mars person. of the world. 
the the Bill Mars yeah. of the world because, yeah. because I mean I mean honestly it's not just a right Gre- wing Greta Van Susteren to me is one of the least objectionable people on Fox News which is not to say that I have any great love for for Fox News or for that matter just to be clear CNN or MSNBC as far as I'm concerned they're they're all part of a very deeply problematic well, what what is the John structure. Stewart line it's like the it's like being the only skinny kid at Fat Camp no uh, the, the, the 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 thinnest kid at Fat Camp something that's like that that's right. what called Bill O'Reilly yeah, yeah yeah that's right but and the, and it's true to yeah, an extent right, right? because right. because because O'Reilly presents himself as uh, sort of the the most moderate, only when you contrast him with kind of the Sean Hannitys or the or the whoever else, you know. That's right. And That's and right. It's a I mean that whole network, they should just call it Straw Man TV or something like that. Right. Because, well, we can get into it. We can have a whole show just dedicated to well, we, the not only Fox News but the influence it's had on 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 on, on news media, but. Anyway. Well, I mean, it's it's. I mean, you can draw a straight line mm-hmm. between between the stories that are presented, not just on Fox News, but also on talk radio, uh, partisan talk radio specifically, with yeah. with you know a lot of the problematic policies that have emerged. And I, I say this, you know, it's it's kind of like we're talking about. Well, I, I used to be a, a leftist, and now I'm this. I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh. I don't know if you know that about me. It's one of my yeah. deep dark secrets. <laughs> you were a ditto. What is it? Ditto head. I was a ditto head. You were a ditto I was, head. Wow. I was a ditto head in junior high. Yikes! I, I read I read Rush Limbaugh's book, which is called "The Way Things Ought to Be." And then you hit puberty, I guess. Right? No, I went to high school. That's what people. Oh, like, right, why right. Did you stop, <laughs> stop listening to Rush Limbaugh? I was like, well, I got a high school education. And that was all it took. That was all it took. That was all it took. Actually, freshman year. It was freshman year. You know, didn't even take a full four years of high school. Yeah, I, I, you, right. You finished I, ninth grade. I, uh, you know, history. Well, because I mean, it, it honestly. It's it's one of those things where like I listen to to and you know you know what this is sort of a tangent but I think it's a tangent worth following the Muslim community in America heavily favored the Republicans certainly and 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 again for those you know in the listening audience who may be politically affiliated with the Republican Party you know only goes to show again going back to that idea of diversity that we have within the you know within the American Muslim right community. I mean and that's so not, not to say that that's the, to say that it's, it's a thing of the past right that's right. not to say that Muslim In Republicans total. don't exist right. but they are kind of like you know if if you see one you know sort of preserve it under glass because it's an endangered species because because the Republican Party has made yeah. pretty clear that they're you know uh if we're welcome to hang around, but you know, don't don't Sir, yeah. don't get too uppity. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, but but by and large, yeah. the, the and even before before George W. Bush, by and large, it seems like the Muslim community leaned more heavily towards uh, the Republican uh, and worldview. And it's interesting. Whatever. Go back to that initial question you started the show that we started the show with, which is why has the level of vet, the, the level of vitriol against Muslims and Islam increased? More, even more so than the days after nine eleven, I, I think it all it's all it all plays in, or it all plays into a you know into the into a bigger picture, which is what we're also seeing or what we have been seeing, it, it, you know, vis a vis the Republican Party, the GOP, in the last ten to fifteen years, in terms of the, the this rise of sort of white nativism, like nativist, you know. Uh, you know, somebody kind of, somebody it, made a, a really good point uh, the other day about how. After 9-11, part of the reason you didn't see the same degree of anti-Muslim animus, not to say it wasn't there, but I mean, I think big picture, it was it was relatively sedate. And, but part of that was because the message of don't hold all Muslims accountable for this came from George W. Bush. That's right. And something, yeah, Fox News forgets to mention when it, when it wants to tie everything back to Obama, right? Right. Which is like, Obama's not doing enough, or Obama's a closet Muslim, right? Well, Which and is the, like, the fact dude, that- let's not forget. I mean, and again, I, I, you know, I remember the days after 9-11 where I, I, I embraced what George Bush was doing, um, you know, in terms of, you know, visiting mosques. I mean, I think, you know, days after he spoke from the Islamic Center in, in Washington, D.C., where he... Where he made that, you know, where he made the statement, "Islam is peace," and uh, you know, this he had Hamza Yusuf come. That to was the, at the uh, what the not the state not, of the not union, the state of the union. It was the it was like September seventeenth or whatever. That was correct. The it was in response to the events of nine eleven. That was where the famous axes of evil speech. That, no, no, that was later. I think. No. I'm oh, sure. that was it. Oh, wow. Okay, I, I know that was like. Where he borrowed... Either you're with us or you're with was, the terrorists. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Which, but it was also uh, where... He, Anakin Skywalker later that's right. <laughs> repurposed. That's because George Lucas is a hack. Only, you, only, you heard it here, folks. Yeah. Well, only Sith deal in absolutes. <laughs> Are you absolutely sure about that? 
Um, where were we? Let's see. we <laughs> Sorry, this. folks. You got to realize when when Parvez and I talk, we can we can very seamlessly yes. bounce back and forth from from deep politics to deep religion to to my forte, which is useless uh, pop culture stuff. So so I'm whether it's The Simpsons or Star Wars yeah, or comic I'm, books. I'm the drag in this whole thing. So I just want to. No, no. Um, but but I mean, that's, yeah. it, the fact that it came from Bush right. is arguably the reason it wasn't as bad mm. as as our and and you know what. It's worth pointing out now, all of the invective notwithstanding, it's, it's you know, Muslims are not being uh, targeted per se, you know, so it's all, right. it's all a degree of perspective. That's right. But I will definitely say that the, that the, the language, the rhetoric has coarsened right. in the right. present in a way that it didn't uh, 11, 12 years ago. Yeah, very true. Very true. Uh, and the fact that, you know, for, I think, purely political reasons... Uh, you know, uh, Obama's never visited a, a mosque or, or or a Muslim institution, right? Well, uh, and, and I mean, here's the thing, right? right? Uh, Obama, uh, per, per per the opposition, Obama is the Muslim president. He's a secret Muslim, and I'm kind of like, how many Muslims does this guy have to kill? Before people stop accusing him of being a Muslim. Yeah, sad but true. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this is a drone presidency, as as uh, somebody said. I can't take credit for that, but... Cornell uh, West. As a Cornell West. Yeah, okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. You know, uh, who is no fan of, of the president. And, and I mean, it, it definitely... And, and we're not trying to go down any kind of a partisan road here, but, yeah. I mean, we, we do look at... We have to look at the trends, and we have to look at current trends as not existing in a vacuum, right? right? History is, is ebbs and flows, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? It's, history is a, mo- a series of moments that are connected Certainly. to each other, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so I mean, that, that's, that's important stuff that we have to recognize, you know? I'm, uh, when we talk about ISIS, we have to talk about it not in a vacuum, but as the outgrowth of United States foreign policy in that region. Absolutely, and that's not in any way to justify what they are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also not to justify what the United States is doing. I mean, we, you know, this that's is right. it's this this is the challenging part of being grown ups in a in a in a world mm-hmm. that asks us to be grown ups. You know, right. it's. it's uh, it's recognizing that, and, and I think you know. Again, we, we, we've we've sort of brought up so many issues, but we've talked about the media, and I think it goes back to having a in, having an intelligent conversation about these issues in in, in the sort of present um, uh, you know media culture is almost impossible because it, you know it, the, the, you know present media culture doesn't like nuance, right? Right? It wants sound bites and. So, you know, to, 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 to be able to engage in a conversation that at the same time denounces ISIS and, 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 you, know, and you know, talks about the barbaric events that they do, uh, mean, while at the same time acknowledging that ISIS doesn't grow out of a vacuum um, is almost impossible. Right? Yeah. And again, given the sort of, at least the state of mainstream right. media, whether it's, you know, print or, 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 or 24 uh, our news channels. Well, I mean, in that sense, it shows how the conversation 11 years later hasn't advanced much further from they hate us because of our freedom. Yeah. It's that same level of very binary, uh, you know, boiled down, simplified. That's right. We, give us the simple answer. So bear in mind, you know, hu- human nature is funny, right? Because we, the cognitive dissonance is so powerful. We will take a comforting fabrication <laughs> over an uncomfortable truth. That's, That's right. Just, I mean, That's I mean, just uh, earlier this week, mm-hmm. uh, a vote was taken and I don't know if you know this, Pluto is now a planet again. Again. Right. And, right. and I was, you know, I was having this conversation with my students where I was like, the facts haven't changed. Yeah, but people ju- people would just rather have Pluto be a planet, and that's fascinating right. to me, right? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, uh, the T Rex, yeah, uh, according to new data, had feathers. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. okay. And and I told this to some of my students. They were like, "Don't ruin my childhood." Mm. I don't want T Rex to have feathers, and it's like, but the facts say he had feathers, right? And I'm willing to bet that the next Jurassic Park movie uh, is going to have a T Rex that don't have feathers, right? Right. Because we don't, we don't want, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so in other words, right. give me the 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 fiction that I feel comfortable with, mm, rather than interesting. So so you tie that in with you know oh well they they hate us because of our freedom. Well that 
an answer like that allows me to to not have to now deal with the uncomfortable or, realities of of geopolitics. That's right, or be self critical, right? And and you know we've we've talked about Sam Harris and we've talked about some of the some of these other voices out there. Uh, I think it's worth noting. I think today, uh, you know, Glenn Greenwald came out with a piece where one of the and, and he takes on Sam Harris and one of the things he he raises is. Just this, again, exactly what you're saying, which is the, the level of comfort people have in demonizing the other or saying that, you know, these, you know, miscreants on the other side of the world and, 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 the, and the mischief they do and, and, the, and the evil they do, it's so easy to do that, uh, you know, denying or, uh, or, or neglecting to, uh, you know, take that sort of same look or that analysis inward. Yeah. Look at look at their own actions. So he talks about, like for example, Sam Harris. How easy it is to denounce the actions of ISIS or Muslims, meanwhile neglecting or at or, or at times cheerleading uh, similar or uh, brutalities uh, that the West has wrought, right. or the American uh, you know the American foreign policy has wrought, or the Bush Cheney or Obama administration has wrought. So it's always easier to do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when you when you cloak yourself in righteousness, then yeah. then whatever means to to the ends that you have are still the, they're still righteous. Yeah, right. It's right. you know, um, earlier this week I showed my, I screened Red Dawn for my students, the, the original Red Dawn from nineteen eighty four, which by the way is I don't know if you know this, it's the very first film to be rated PG thirteen. Did not know that Red Dawn. I remember as a child when that rating first was introduced. What I didn't know that it was for Red Dawn. Yeah, well, because what happened is that in yeah. in eighty three, I think, uh-huh. uh, or or eighty four, you you had like uh, you know Mola Ram pulling a guy's heart out. And that's right, like that. and those rated PG. Yeah, so a true. lot of kids were ruined. I'm pretty sure by yeah. stuff like Gremlins, you know. Right. So Red Dawn, uh, first PG thirteen. But what is it about? Right, it's about. The, the Soviet Union mm-hmm. invading small town America, mm-hmm. and all it takes is a couple of football players to to to, to sort of you with know with no military training, right? Exactly, right? <laughs> just a couple and of good old boys, just right, you know, yeah. the, just corn fed, yeah. you know, uh, the the heartland of America. That's right. And, and first of all, the, the film is directed by John Milius, who's very heavily conservative, right leaning, mm-hmm. and and this film is, I mean, it's it's like a right wing. Panacea, you know, it, it's representative of so many things that so true. that are, you know, of that moment in time, right? right. And when you think, I wouldn't about be it, surprised if Reagan had, had had you know cited it or talked about it, right? right. It was he, like he, Rambo, right? It was right. like Rambo, very right. much so. Right, yeah. But I mean, that's a perfect example, yeah. right? Because yeah. because in order for that film to work mm-hmm. in any kind of historical context, the the film, I don't know if you remember this, but at the at the beginning, it it has like a text scroll of like this has happened and this has happened and like it fabricates mm. it's like an alternate history that allows for that the, movie to happen oh, right. because because in reality yeah. the Soviet Union was not in any position to do anything like that because it was in free fall economically yeah, that's by right. anyway you know that's what I mean? right. so but this is our image of like the evil empire mm-hmm. right you know yeah. and and again it's it's so in, indicative of how these type of these types of things allow for an uncritical acceptance right and I, but here's the, the the interesting thing about this is that I showed this to my students now, thirty years removed from anything, any any relevance yeah. as far as the Soviet Union, and they're like, it's propaganda. Mm. And I give my students a lot of credit for recognizing that. Now, would they? Do you think they would recognize that 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 that, that propaganda, as it were, if you were to show them an episode of Homeland, for example? No. I haven't seen the show. No, but from what I've no. heard, it's no, they wouldn't. It traffics in this same kind of propaganda right? they against wouldn't. Muslims. It, it well, it very much so, and oh. and they wouldn't because. Do you watch? I mean, have you seen? Uh, I, I haven't seen it, but my wife uh, uh, likes it. Okay, she's very anti-Muslim now. No, <laughs> totally. <Poor. laughs> You better edit this out, Zucky. Okay. Yeah. If she listens, which, yeah. If she's anything like my wife, she doesn't. Yeah. Same, same here. We can say whatever we want. There you go. Uh, no, but, but I mean, that, that, yeah, that show is of the current moment. Uh-huh, you know, right. I mean, yeah. we we grew up during the Cold War era, That's so right. I'm willing to wager that we took a lot of that stuff at face value. Oh, for sure. Rocky IV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, we talked about Rocky IV with uh, with Mustafa Davis. That's right. You remember, you know, that's that's right. that same idea of like, well, we we accept it uncritically. Yeah, 
Right. And and so, I mean, this is the power of media. I mean, mm. This is why I'm a, a media instructor to some extent. Well, yeah, well there, there you go. You, you actually said it because I, I was like, well, you know, you talk a lot about media and you talk about your references to pop culture. Uh, uh, why is that? I think there's something uniquely uh, – uh, there's something unique to you in, in your own experiences uh, as to why um, you do know so much. So uh, this kind of brings us into probably phase two of our conversation today, which is – uh, a little bit more about Zucky and perhaps a little bit more about Pervez. Well, I mean, I, th- I think for me, th- th- part, I, I feel like, I feel like I, I, there's twin parts of my identity, right? There's yeah. my identity as a media scholar and a critic, and then there's my identity as a, an American Muslim for whatever, whatever that means, mm-hmm. right? And, and it's the, it's the... Do the, your two podcasts kind of represent those? They really are. They're like the poles of my identity. <laughs> right. Right. Movie, film, podcast, and, and the diff- and diffuse congruence. They really are. And, yeah. and it's, it's funny because, because uh, it's, it's, they, they, sat, they scratch different itches for me, you know, because, you because I love being able to just talk, yeah. about, uh, talk about inconsequential stuff and making it consequential. Mm-hmm. And by that same token, in terms of what we do, I like to talk about consequential stuff. But with an air of inconsequentiality. So, so <laughs> Nicely it works said. either way. Yeah. But but I mean, you know, I, yeah. I've I've been a film buff all my life, and and I think that uh, the power of media is is self evident. Mm. And I think uh, you know we are one thing I tell my students we are soaking in it. Mm. Uh, we don't. Every facet of our life is impacted by media, whether we recognize it or not. Whether you're talking about advertising or film or television or m- music, radio, magazines, books, uh, social media. It's, I mean, we, we cannot escape it. So by virtue of that, we can't put our heads in the sand and say, well, I'm just going to shut everything out. Because I, I would argue that that places a, a, us at something of a disadvantage when it comes to engaging mm-hmm. with the, you know, the rest of the world, the world at large. Because That's because right. you need to frame the conversation in a way that people are familiar with. And and so wait, so you say you've been a film buff all your life. So tell us a little bit. So you you were born in Chicago. I was born in Chicago. Yeah, yeah in, in in the uh, late seventies, and uh, uh, moved to Saudi Arabia when I was uh, when I was three. Mm. And and you know. People are always like, like, uh, when was that? And I'm always like, I moved to Saudi Arabia uh, a few months before Return of the Jedi came out. There you go. And this is something about me, which is like a weird, useless mutant power, is that I measure time based on what yes, movies were out. And Pervez knows this yes. about me. It's like my e- weird... even the birth of his children. Yeah, exactly. Like my my, my old. I'm like, hey, how old is, me, is 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 your second now? And you're like, well, he was he was born, born in the just, year just a few months before uh, Star Trek came out. The, the See? Of Star Trek. See, that's how I remember. Um, yeah, it's true. It's, it's, and you got married the summer that uh, I got married the summer that Pirates of the Caribbean came out. Yeah. The first one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. But, but yeah, this, yeah, I mean, so, so yeah. to me, it's like. All of like I. I'm, so your earliest memories. Sorry, I don't mean to keep going. Like your earliest memories are in Saudi Arabia. I mean, you don't remember I mean, Chicago. I, I, I do. I do remember okay, Chicago. Wow. I do remember Chicago. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I have very clear memories of Chicago, mm. which is kind of odd. But you know, yeah. uh, you know, I remember. I, I, I had that point of, of contrast. Okay. You know? Okay. And 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 by that same token, I have a lot of clear memories about Saudi Arabia, and it's and it's interesting because because when we talk about Saudi Arabia, in terms of it being a a uh, you know oppressive country and, and this and that um, it's it's helpful to to place personal experience for me because because when I think of Saudi Arabia is the government problematic and mm-hmm. is, are the way people treat it I'm not going to defend any of that but I will say this the people there the lay people the average people are just people yeah and they're you know That's they're right. just living their lives like they, you know Trying and, to make ends meet, you know, you know like everybody. Better future for their kids. Yeah. They're just people. They're just folks. Right. Right. And so I'm very grateful for the fact that I spent 10 years of my formative years living in Saudi Arabia, getting a sense of, of that culture, not only on its own, but a, as contrasted with American culture. So I have a deep love for for my experiences that I had in Saudi Arabia, and I have a deep love for America because it's my home. And and so, I'm like, grateful think, for having had those. Do you think that initial, like... Being attracted to or, or being interested in, uh, it, like you said, you're a film buff. So, like being interested in, in, in watching movies came as a result of the fact that you lived in Saudi Arabia, where 
uh, at least at that time, certainly this is pre satellite dish internet yeah. where American culture or finding, you know, uh, kind of like a piece of home. Yeah. Too. Yeah. That it was really absent there. And to, to an extent, you right. know, I mean, and I it would I, only I, be when you came back on the holidays or what have you, whenever you did yeah. visit we used, America, we used to come back every summer. There you go. Yeah. And, um, that kind of heightened the, 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 perhaps some of the fascination with, I, I think, I think to an extent, I mean, yeah. I mean, being, being an American in Saudi Arabia was interesting because certainly at that time it afforded you a degree of privilege mm-hmm. by virtue of the fact that you speak without, you know, an accented uh, uh, tone or whatever, like it, it, or, or rather with an American accent, I should say mm. it, it, my, my perception certainly at that time was that it, it, again, it, it afforded a, a degree of privilege. Certainly. Having an American passport. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Et cetera. You know, uh, and, because I mean, a lot of people don't realize, or is, well, I mean, people who've, who've lived there or have visited there know this, but you know, just even being from the, being from the subcontinent, you know, you're from the subcontinent. I am, our parents are, um, you know, that, 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 that represents a certain class in, in Saudi Arabian society, right? Yeah. Typically working class. But, 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 but just by sheer virtue of the fact that your father was an American working in Saudi Arabia, in spite of the fact that he was an Indian, uh, or from, or came from Indian origins afforded him a certain privilege. Right. Um, you know, my parents spent a great deal of time in Saudi Arabia. I was, it was uh, unlike you though. It was after I was much older. So I, I didn't live there personally, mm-hmm. but I would like you visit during the holidays. And so I got to experience almost what you experienced in reverse. The reverse. Yeah. yeah. And obviously as much older, I was already in college when these experiences, when I, when I had these experiences, but to see that, to yeah. see the fact that, you know, one that, that, that my, again, my father and my family, just by virtue of the fact that they were quote unquote Americans, naturalized American citizens were afforded a certain degree of privilege, not only that set them apart from others vis-a-vis like Saudi Arabia, like Saudis, mm-hmm. but also other Indians. Right, right. right? Even fellow employees. So my father worked for an oil company, even fellow employees who were not quote unquote on American payroll or were not, you know, working as Americans abroad or working as American expats were treated differently, even within a, a department or an office. So that, that, that again, I don't want to well, get into like Saudi like, but you know stratified is, society, this, but, which is a, yeah, yeah, it's a whole other, that's right. Politics. But, but this does fly in the face of this idea of like Saudi Arabia is this hotbed so of true. anti-Americanism. It's not, I mean, it's, Demonstrably not true. That's and, you know, right. Well, one thing I always say, right, because one of my one of my fondest memories of, of just being a kid is being really into GI Joe, mm-hmm. and I used to read GI Joe comics in Saudi Arabia. That was one of the few comics huh. that they sold there. Okay. So I, you know, that's that's something that I associate very intrinsically with growing up in Saudi Arabia is reading GI Joe or Real American Hero. That's right. You know. And Can't get any more, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, American apple yeah, pie. Rah, rah, yeah, rah, rah, yeah, that, that's you know? right. And, and so that's the thing. So, mm. so I, again, I'm, I'm grateful for having had those experiences. Right. And I do consider my time there uh, very much formative. And and so uh, it just sort of, to sort of circle yeah. back to, like, my, you know... Your own experiences. My, my own experiences. Uh, you know, I realized pretty early on after moving back to the States that I wanted to pursue an education in film Mm. and and it it partially came from just my affection for the form but partially from my my curiosity about the form and 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 uh the ability it had to 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 shape minds and shape ideas and just to to impact people's thinking so i'm great you know i I went to i went to columbia college which is a Mm. film school in chicago right and i'm grateful for that experience and you know i currently i i I write uh for the huffington post and it's funny because I started writing for Huffington Post doing sort of com- Muslim commentary on, mm-hmm. on events. The first blog that I had posted there was about, I think it was called the the paradox of the Muslim Republican or something to that effect. Oh wow! Okay. You know, and then and I talked about Sharia law and this and that. And then I gradually, what I found that uh, you know I've, I've shifted over more to doing film reviews and things like that. Mm-hmm. And and. It's interesting because all the and now the show is available, on, and now the show is, of course, you can listen by to virtue of the on, fact on that you're of, of your affiliation with Huff, with, with HuffPo. Yeah, well, and and you know the the Bill Maher thing, right? Mm. I got some emails from people who were like, "Oh, why aren't you know you should write something mm. about this?" And you should, and I was like, you know, I was like, I don't care. That's that. It's mm. it's weird and it's almost counterintuitive, but I was just like, I can't get myself ginned up over this yeah. same thing. 
again and again. Right. Like, and and that's not it's almost to say, like you have to have a template that you can just churn out. Yeah, you know what I mean. And right? That's that's not to you any just way replace the names. Right. Yeah. It's like Mad Libs. That's what know? I'm saying. It's and, like a template you can work with. That's not in any way to minimize the yeah. efforts of people who are responding. Right. Was, you know, uh, Rabia Chaudhry yeah. uh, wrote a terrific piece for, for Time Magazine that was that was yeah. point by point rebutting Bill Maher. And and I was like, you know, God bless her. Reza Aslan. Reza Aslan, yeah. of course. Mm-hmm. Um, who, All on our wish list of people we'd, like, we'd we, love to have we'd on the show. We'd love to have them on, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I was just like, you know what, I can't. I can't find the energy, and I don't know yeah. if that's because I'm lazy or just because <clears throat> I feel like I feel. You know, here, here's what I'm finding, right? And maybe you can you can respond to this. I find that as I get older, my I, my, my my sphere of not influence but interest yeah, shrinks so true. to the extent that I'm like, you know what? I'm worried about myself. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried that's about right. my kids. I don't care what Bill Maher is saying in L.A. I don't care what <laughs> David Horowitz is saying over there because I just. I don't have enough, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, the, the analogy I've made is that, like, as you get older, you, it, imagine you're playing a game of Tetris, and like the the full space is like the hours in the day. Mm. So, like, when the day starts, it's like you're bringing blocks down, you're positioning them, you're doing, and you're like, all right, I got four, I'm right. good to go. And then, you know, as the day goes on, you've got like a gap here, and then yeah. another gap here, and, and if the stuff starts piling up, you're like, okay, and I don't have enough room here, and right. then, you know, that's kind of where yeah. I'm at, where it's yeah. like. Do I have an hour and a half or whatever to sit down and rebut the stupidity that some of these people are saying? If if inspiration strikes, yeah. fantastic. But I can't sit down and and just make myself interested That's in this right. anymore. You know what I mean? Far better usage of your time. Yeah, you know. I mean, and, and, I, and that sounds. I don't know. I don't, I don't mean to sound dismissive of people who do take right. the time. Right. Disagree. And, and, because and if do people it, but, because if people yeah. have that that inspiration hit them, That's then wonderful. God bless. That's great. But that's the thing. I I'm. I'm yeah. not having the yeah. inspiration to the That's same right. extent, partially because it's just, uh, you know, it's it's the, it's the same old song that's right. being played. You know, people are just playing covers right. of the same song. That's right. That's right. And it's like I already responded to the original version of this. Yeah, yeah. You know. So so wait, sneaky you, you got away from. We're, we're talking about you. So oh, like, sorry. And, and, and your own your own background and experiences. Um, <laughs> sorry, I feel like gross. I'm no, no, no. Uh, so it, I think it's I think it's fascinating because I, I think uh, you know fascinating in the sense that I think the listeners should know. I mean that you know when we when we do this show um, and when we engage our guests, we're engaging them from a certain point of view, and and from and and, and that's certainly shaped by our own background and experiences. And, and those are limited. Those are imperfect, you know, but it's who we are. So yep. we can't be, you know, everything, right? I mean, I, I, I can't, I, I can speak from my experiences, but those experiences may not even be similar to your experiences, even though we, we roughly fit within a certain demographic, right? As being born to Indian Pakistani immigrants, more specifically Hyderabadi immigrants and so on and so forth. But that is to say that, you know, my experiences are certainly different from, you know, a Syrian uh, American or, or an African American yeah. or Asian American, Asian, Asian right. And so on and so forth. So, yeah. So, uh, tell like in terms of uh, your own sort of religious identity, if you don't mind getting in a little bit of that. I mean, so you grew up in a pretty religious household. I would say so. You know, yeah. uh, my, my mom is, is a Hafiz. That's she has right. the entire Quran memorized. Uh, my brother is a Hafiz. He has the, the Quran memorized. That's right. Uh, I, I'm not a Hafiz. So that's, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm the I'm the least impressive person in my family. Your half is a popular culture. Can uh, I say well, that without being, you know, yeah. <laughs> like it, I said, the least impressive person in my family. <laughs> it's, it's incredibly sad. But it's but yeah, probably I mean, sacrilegious. I shouldn't say that. But anyway, so go on. Um, I mean, it's it's you know, I'm I'm grateful for this. This is the thing, right? Because I, what what important for me is when people are when when you have Sam Harris. Or whoever saying Islam is this, mm-hmm. I feel very comfortable saying no. Mm-hmm. I know what Islam is mm-hmm. because I've lived, I've lived in a house where Islam has been practiced all my life. I have, I, I get to look at my father as an example. I get to look at my mother as an example. Mm-hmm. I get to look at my brother as an example. And I, you know, and there are a lot of people who are born Muslims who who don't have that that same. Uh, uh, privilege or whatever you know, mm. where, you know, because they're they're not raised in those necessarily same, the same set of experiences. Yeah, you know, I mean, they're, right. they're, they're they're not raised in necessarily religious households or whatever. So I feel I feel very privileged in that sense. Where 
I recognize the diversity of ways in which of praxis, if you will. That's right. But I'm also able, you know, I mean, when you say, "Oh, this," you you know, the Quran is a manual of war or whatever. It's like, well, I have two family members who have it internalized, and it right. it it's it informs their behavior. Right. And so I'm able to look at that and and uh, to, you know, when I can to the degree that I can emulate it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. for me that I'm I'm grateful for that because I can uh, at no point does somebody like Sam Harris make even a, a modicum of sense to me because I have, you know, it's it's all about the micro versus the macro. I have I have micro level connection okay. right. with people who 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 uh, demonstrate uh, practice and belief. That's right. I don't know right. if that makes any no, sense. No, no, it does. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so I'm certainly not yeah. going to present myself as any kind of a standout or any kind of a, a role model. Obviously, I, I hope I can be to some extent to my kids, but I can at least say that. Right. 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 And and so for me, my my concept of Islam is is a very personal one in the sense of I, I know. Uh, the impact it's had on my life and the the ways in which it's shaped my identity. That's right. And and I'm very grateful to to have that and to be, to be able to play that against uh, what I consider very related interests in terms of the, the you know my field of of instruction, etc. I mean I don't I don't know if I mentioned this, but you know I'm, I I teach media yeah. and communication, so right. that, uh, to me they're not they're not one does not exclude the other. There there's you know there's nothing to me. Uh, that says that uh, um, Islam is against the use of media or things like that because I think it's it's integral mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, to identity. Right. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, no, Sorry, absolutely. I feel like I'm just kind of no, no, no. It, it makes a lot of sense, and I think that what you're what, what you're sharing, and, and you know, and, I'm, I'm, and we can talk a little bit about myself, or I'll, I'll talk a little bit about myself in, in, in a moment. But this is what all this is one of the things that always gets me when I, for example, again, we're talking about stuff that's been in the media recently. But, um, you know, Megyn Kelly's piece on, you know, when, when she interviews that guy who was, you know, supposedly an ex-member uh, uh, congregant of that mosque in Oklahoma, right? right. Which is like, you know, for, for again, for, for the average American who has never set foot inside of a mosque or, <clears throat> what is it, I think like upwards of almost 40% of Americans who say they don't know a Muslim – Right. Uh, for them, that image or what the, what was presented or what is presented in not only on that on that particular sh- interview but just what's out there in the media is the only version of Islam they get. Right. Uh, but for us, you know, who grew up going to the mosque, attending the mosque, it's a very very different. It's a very very different picture, yeah. right? I mean, this is a place where I mean. By and large, the people that you interact with and meet are people like you and I, right? People who kind of come from our experiences, uh, as opposed to "quote unquote" this radical or you know, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you get the sense to when you hear these people talk that it's yeah. some kind of cloak and dagger thing, or people are wearing uh, yeah uh, masks and you know, uh, uh, you know, performing secret rituals, right? And and, and and again, I, I that that's why I empathize with with again, you know, why there is so much. Uh, you know, miss like why there is so much distrust out there, uh, 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 you know, among the average American or the average Westerner, perhaps even, because a they've never been inside of a mosque and they've never met a Muslim or you know upwards of forty percent or what have you uh, have never met a Muslim. I mean, what what else are they going to believe other than yeah. what we you know what what you see in in the media? And so yeah, I, you know, I, I'd be I'd be scared too. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, Certainly. you know, I wrote my master's thesis oh. on, on the, the TV series Lost. That's right. And and the my approach towards that was <clears throat> specifically the character Saeed, who's played by uh, Naveen Andrews, right? And uh, and uh, specifically, my focus was the idea of this character who is a, an Iraqi Muslim uh, on, on a show, and it was the by my, by my estimation, it was the first time we saw a continuing positive Muslim character on a show mm-hmm. and what got me interested in focusing on that as as the as my thesis other than the the fringe benefit of watching TV as research for my for my paper uh, was the fact that both my brother and my dad both of whose names are Sayyid mm. uh, had two experiences where they were renting cars and both both of them oh. had that experience where people were like oh Sayyid like Sayyid on lost I love him he's great 
And I was like, man, this is fascinating. Yeah. Like, the idea of uh, notwithstanding the fact that those are two two, two different names. Yeah, it, totally ignorant. Be, but, right. awesome. but 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 yeah, that's right. I remember when I was a kid, people would be like, "Your name is Hassan." Are you related to Saddam Hussein? And I said yes because we have the same last name. Isn't that obvious? I, rem- I remember one time people were like, "What's it like? What was it like in Saudi Arabia?" I was like, "Oh well, I remember this one time uh, this prince invited us to his house and uh, he served us like chilled monkey brains and eyeball soup." That's right. Like, oh my god, really? I'm like, no, moron. That's Indiana Jones. <laughs> but anyway. But the fact that that both my dad and my brother had that happen, yeah. I was like, it's interesting how yeah. how by by in the absence of knowing an actual Muslim, mm-hmm. the 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 Muslim who I know on television, the reference point becomes the, be, yeah. right. The the reference point changes yeah. exactly. That's, right. that's that's very instructive. Right? That's right. And we've had you know someone like Amran Basha on in the past, you know, yeah. who's out there writing, you know, as a Hollywood writer and trying to change that narrative. Farhan Thahir. or or Farhan Thahir, certainly trying to bring more of those voices. Uh, into the mainstream or into in, into in, into the American household, yeah. as it were, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, as an Indian, how many people uh, identify with Apu, which is probably I don't know if that's a good thing, but yeah. <laughs> although when you think Apu on The Simpsons is one of the most positive Indian that's right. characters, right? Because that's right. I mean, I mean, it's all about breaking down stereotypes, right? When you think that's about it, not breaking down stereotypes as the guy who works at the convenience store. But when you think about it, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. interesting right. because because notwithstanding the convenience store, yeah. he ha- he has children, that's right. he has a wife who he loves, he, like right. all of these, you know. And and I remember there's there's an episode. Uh, it's the wedding episode, yeah, where he struggles. Where it's, they bring it's, in Indian culture. Tu Ganesh nehe, Ganesh bedunga nehe. Remember that? Of course, right? I mean, that's 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 what media can do, you right? Know I mean? And they t- and they take on the issue of like arranged marriages versus you know so called love marriages and all that stuff. And done it all, yeah, uh, in a way that's just uh, that, or at least it, was humorous. It, it was humorous. We, Let's not talk about we, that. It's, we haven't laughed at the Simpsons in a while, but uh, well, let's talk about you. Yeah. I mean, I mean. Uh, what are you doing here? <laughs> Who are you? That's, I'm Admiral Stockdale. <laughs> or you're the uh, you're the Phil Hartman. You know? hey, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the imitation yeah. of, of, yeah, yeah, of yeah, Admiral Stockdale, right, which is a oh, classic bit. Uh, yeah, so uh, a little bit, yeah, a little bit different uh, in terms of my own experiences. Um, like you, I was born here uh, to uh, immigrants who came here in the uh, in the early '70s. My father actually came here as a, as a college student. Um, and then went back home, got married, and you know, and then then had me one um, when he was a graduate student uh, in Texas. Um, so I, I was born and raised, spent most of my life in Texas. Although we did live uh, quite a quite a different, you know, quite a number of places growing up. Even um, we moved around quite a bit. I always say like I, I wasn't a military brat, but like probably if there's if there is such a thing like an oil like an oil kid or an mm-hmm. oil, oil oil brat mm-hmm. my father was in the oil industry and so we moved around to all the hot spots within the united states uh, and later on they would move on to some of the hot spots in terms of oil or in the world but uh growing up you know uh most of my life i spent in texas um and so uh, you know but uh you know having um like i, I grew up in a household that probably uh wasn't as religious as yours i mean i you know uh, but at the same time, we were imbued with a sense of uh, of, 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 of Muslim identity and, and culture, uh, where we were taught to uh, respect and, and 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 give reverence to to not only our cultural background but also our religious identity. Uh, uh, I mean, later on, as I as I grew older, as I grew older, my parents became more religious, and 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 and, and, and you know certainly. Uh, Praxi became, you know, much more a part of the household. But I just think of my sort of early experiences. Um, so again, slightly different. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, so I I, I kind of grew up in that kind of a milieu. Um, uh, I think having moved around a lot, having lived in so many different places, both as a young child and then years later after I get married, uh, sort of you know leaving Texas again. To venture out for graduate studies, and even having the you know the opportunity, being afforded the opportunity to study Islam in sort of an academic setting uh, as a graduate student, and then abroad in in, in Cairo for for a few months, um, you know certainly informed my worldview about Islam, and 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 being able to appreciate it from more than just a um, you know a a cultural experience or a mm-hmm. personal experience to you know being able to look at things in an informed or quote-unquote academic fashion sure yeah 
so that I mean, I think that's that's that that's sort of my background. Um, not sure if there's anything else that's. Well, I mean, that's fascinating. I mean, I mean yeah. you know, in, in, here in the Bay Area, you you give uh, you give a Friday sermon and mm-hmm. things like that. So, so I mean, obviously, uh, your experiences have led you to this point. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, again, like you said, I mean, I'm very privileged, and I and I feel a great sense of privilege for the opportunities that I have had, for the opportunities that I continue to have, uh, as you mentioned here um, in in the Bay Area. Uh, I also, uh, you know, teach uh, a course at one of the area law schools uh, where they offer an elective course on Islamic law, Islam, you know, Sharia. Mm-hmm. So where I'm, I have, again, the opportunity like you to interact with people, to, with students who uh, in, in most cases are, uh, are, 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 well, are, are informed enough to know that Islamic, well, or, well informed enough to know what Islamic law isn't. That is to say, informed enough to know that Islamic law or Sharia cannot be, you know, uh, uh, or cannot be only that which is presented in the media. So I'm dealing with students who at least come with that kind of an open mind, uh, because I'm dealing with second or third year level law students. I think that has probably something to do with it. So, so I think my, maybe my experience is talking about Islam in that context, or maybe slightly different than yours, when you present it more from the vantage point of. You know, in the media or, or, or popular culture or, or a movie. So, uh, but that's been an amazing experience. Is, uh, experience. I, I love teaching. I love interacting with young people and, and with just, you know, being in that sort of a uh, dynamic. So that's been, again, a, a very great opportunity that I've been able to do. Uh, and like you said, just, I mean, you know, probably a lot of that comes to do with the fact or has to do with the fact that I, I was able to study Islam in, in, in more of a regimented kind of a fashion. So, so yeah, that foundation that you can yeah. you can build on, right? And I continue to. I mean, it's ne- it's never ending. It's right? never ending. It's never ending process. So, I, you know, I, I continue to do that in my own personal capacity. So yeah, I mean, those those have sort of been my experiences. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I, th- I think that brings us sort of back around to to what this show is really about. That's and right. I, and and I honestly, p- part of part of us doing this show, mm-hmm. I'll be very honest, it's selfish for me because I enjoy just chilling and chatting and learning from Pervez, who, oh, is, who is far more knowledgeable than me. No. And so I thought and, you were going to say our guest. I mean, which that, that's been my yeah. That too. Uh, I mean, uh, honestly, in, in, for any given folks, you get this. For any given episode, I'm usually the dumbest person in the room, so I'm, I'm just kind of sitting and nodding. That's because you're usually sitting in a closet. That's true. <laughs> I, when we, I, because we don't record like this, which is you know sitting across from each other. Uh, usually, Z- Zucky is having to find refuge in a closet. Because he's got, you know, mashallah, a full household. I have four children, which means that I don't have any privacy, space, and or sanity uh, at, at any given moment. So, 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 so when you say you're the smartest person in the room, that's what he means. I'm, okay? I'm the dumbest person. In the no, room. oh, sorry, sorry, the dumbest person in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. but but I mean, you know, that ultimately, that's that's yeah. this show is about conversations right. because conversations. <laughs> Are how we learn about people. It's not through sound bites. Right. It's through the opportunity to just sit and listen and to interact. And so, really, our hope with every episode, notwithstanding this one, was just us. But with every episode where we have a guest on, we're hoping to be your proxy, you, the audience, mm-hmm. and ask the kind of questions that you would hopefully have. And and you know, really take an opportunity to get to know these fascinating personalities who have fascinating, unique experiences. And yet, what is the common thread among all of them that they consider themselves Muslim, right. and and Islam is an integral part of their identity. And and that's what this show is about. That's and, right. And hopefully, you know, that's that's something no, that, that I mean, we've been able to present over the last year of doing right. This. And and you know, going back to what we you know, like you said, full circle, what we were what we started the show with. In, you know, in terms of what our intentions were behind the podcast, um, you know, certainly from a, like you said, a selfish point of view or vantage point was, uh, or a selfish intention of mine was to just hear um, and to have the opportunity to then record by virtue of having a conversation to tape or to, to whatever. Tape. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know. Sorry. Provis is, is sitting in 1983. <laughs> to live where we can preserve um, these personal narratives that I think and, are and, so unique and and uh, preserve uh, th- them in such a way that taken together they become kind of an oral history that's right uh, and and we've been very lucky to, to get certainly a piece of, of the the history of Islam in the Bay Area 
uh, you know, by virtue of the people we've talked to, and, and hopefully, uh, I'm hoping that that's a tapestry we can keep adding to with with uh, every conversation that we have. Right. No, I, th- I think that's very well said. You know, and, and it also kind of, and I've, I've been asked this at least on a couple of occasions. Um, I, I do want to mention and per- perhaps give a special shout out to um, to uh, Sayed Sayed uh, Hassan or Assad, uh, who is uh, who is actually the uh, I, I say musician, even though he's not a musician, he's he's a dentist. Um, but he, he's actually the person who uh, composed the music that you hear at the outset uh, and at the or sorry at the intro and at the outro of, uh, outro of the show. And, and I think that he's he's kind of an interesting person because he's someone who is directly connected to both Zucky and myself in the sense that uh, family friends to Zucky's uh, in laws. Uh, who I meet through Zucky's in-laws, who happen to be my relatives, um, and someone who I grew up uh, with in Houston uh, and always sort of looked up to as a reference point uh, and, and was, was certainly integral in my own growth as a Muslim and, 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 and someone that I always, again, looked up to and admired. So to have him you know, to, you know, do the music for the show, um, uh, again, as someone who, you know, by his own admission, hadn't picked up the guitar in I don't know how many years, but did so just because of the fact that Zucky and I had requested it, um, you know, I think means a lot. And I think that also says something about, you know, the show and, and, and about how we do how we do what we do. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that music is uh, what you're hearing right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> So uh, as we sort of wind down our conversation, this is episode 12, but we've got episode 13, 14, and, and uh, many more in the pipeline. This is, right. this is just the beginning, and we're very excited to keep these conversations coming. Our wish list of guests exceeds, far exceeds the, the number of shows we've already done. That's so very true. We just hope to be able to uh, bring that wish list to fruition. Uh, that's, that's the plan, and, and we will be, be making a game effort to do that. Uh, now, uh, Pervez, where can people find you online? Uh, so we have obviously uh, our, our, our Facebook page, uh, you know, Facebook um, dot com uh, slash Diffused Ruins. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do have a Twitter account where I've been actually of late more active, uh, and I am at New Madhab, which is uh, T H E N E W M A D H H A B. You got that? Yeah, I know. Uh, it's a mouthful. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's... And you can always email us at diffusecongruence at gmail.com. Uh, obviously, you are listening to us via either Stitcher Radio or, uh, or, iTunes. or iTunes. So please do, you know, follow us or write us a review. Or leave us a star rating. Every little bit helps. That's right. And Zucky, where can people find you? You have much more of a media or an online presence than I do. Well, I, I, uh, I, I'm at zuckyscorner.com, that's the A-K-I-S corner, and also at the Huffington Post, where my film reviews and other commentary pieces go up semi-regularly. You can also add me on Facebook, where I tend to engage in lots of, uh, yes. I was going to say interesting conversations, but conversations anyway, uh, about a variety of things, and I'd love to, to talk about them with you. And, of course, you can find me on Twitter at Zuckys Corner, the A-K-I-S corner, and uh, I do tweet quite a bit. I now have... Uh, uh, several thousand tweets, of which uh, three or four are, are substantive. Uh, but hey, you might get lucky one of these days. So we'll I'm for uh, yeah, I'm, I'm for greener on, on, on Twitter. But uh, nonetheless, again, from from really from the bottom of our hearts, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we've appreciated the uh, continuing feedback that we do get. Uh, hope, hopefully, you did enjoy this episode and have enjoyed the year so far. This is the Diffuse Congruence Podcast. We'll see you next month.